Hello and welcome to my world of crochet. My name is Tine and today I'm here with you for another yarn talk video. And as always, we cannot talk yarn without me having here my faithful mug of tea, which today is my morning blend. It's an ecological tea um, and it has, it's, it's, it's a herb tea with uh, lemon vinebra, um, lemongrass, a mint, and there is one more thing. I think it's cloves um, that's also in it, um, but I don't remember off the top of my mind, but it's just one of these lovely morning teas that works really well with this um, fresh morning weather that we are having right now. The sun is trying to shine. Well, it is shining, but it's not completely blue skies, but it is definitely shining. Um, it's definitely slowly getting to be autumn. Uh, I can feel now that the temperatures are cooling down and I always adapt slower than the rest. So I just find it slowly getting a bit chilly. Um, but that's all right. Like, you know, it's, it's a time of the season and time of the year. So many things basically have happened since last time. So I'm not sure I would say that I've reached to crochet a lot for various reasons. Um, so we first had my fridge, which decided to not wanting to stay shut. So like, you know, you close the door and it like kind of reopens a bit and you can close the door again and it will like just go back open a little bit. Um, and then we thought we got it fixed. Um, and it did work fine for a few days without issues. Um, so that seemed all right. And then Monday morning, I think maybe it was. Yeah, Monday morning of making the last Yarn Talk video. Um, and I didn't really mention it then because I didn't consider it a big issue at the time. Our dishwasher seemed to have broken. It was still like running, trying to pump the water away, but it didn't succeed. And normally it's happened like once before and my partner knows how to fix that. Um, so I thought it would get fixed, but um, later that evening it appeared that it wouldn't get fixed. Um, so we had to take our dishwasher basically apart to figure out a solution to get it fixed. Um, and we were washing it by hand. And, you know, when you do your dishes by hand, you really realize how much you value your dishwasher and how much time you're saving on a daily basis. So it was definitely something that needed to get fixed or we would have to buy a new one. And I was already thinking like, oh, well, hmm. um, so we were kind of preparing ourselves mentally to needing to buy a new dishwasher. Um, but we did get it fixed. We managed to get it fixed. Um, like a day and a half later or so, we got it fixed. And it's been running since without issues. So let's hope that's gonna keep running. Um, and then basically the following day, or was it even the same evening as we got the dishwasher fixed, the fridge started not wanting to close again. It might have been the following day. Yeah, that was Wednesday. So we got a dishwasher fixed Tuesday evening and Wednesday, the fridge started to be an issue again. Um, so we looked at the fridge and it seemed to be, um, I'm not sure what they're called in English, um, but they are hanging on some things like to make them able to open and close. And those seem to have been worn out. So we ordered some new ones, got them one and a half days later or something. Like we ordered them Wednesday evening and we had them Friday. And Friday we latched the top one on and instantly it just kept shot. So that was definitely needed. We did buy new rubbers as well to replace the rubber part of it. Um, but it's probably been needing this for a while actually now looking at it in hindsight because we went from having it all on max cooling um, to keep like the normal fridge temperatures. And when we had that the following morning after fixing it, it was almost like negative, like it was just around zero. So um, that definitely works and our fridge is working again. So basically this past week has been a week of, okay, I might need to buy a new dishwasher and I might need to buy a new fridge, which is a lot of money. Um, 
And at the same time, honestly, my kitchen is probably, my kitchen has been in this house as long as the house has been built. Um, we are not the first owners of the house. We are, I do believe, the second owners of the house. Um, but the kitchen is probably like 20 years old. Um, the house is about maybe 22, somewhere between 20 and 22 years old. Um, and for that, the condition of the kitchen is pretty amazing considering the age of the kitchen. But I do hope I can get at least another 10 years out of it before I need to get a new um, kitchen. And all the new uh, utensils and whatever you need for the kitchen. Um, but it's still going to be quite, um, quite an expenditure when we get there. Um, so I guess subconsciously, as long as it's looking really nice and everything is working, you're trying to push it as far as you want because it's just very expensive. Kitchens are like insanely expensive, at least here. Um, and they are in Denmark as well. And I do believe that's a worldwide common issue that kitchens are really expensive uh, because they are supposed to last quite some time and it's a necessity. And uh, my experience is when things are really a necessity for quality life, um, they tend to get more expensive. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much about what happened during the week. Then this weekend, I had the pleasure of uh, visiting my cousin in Mainz. That was an absolutely wonderful weekend. So I just got the opportunity to just see my family. Uh, we walked around, didn't do like a lot of fancy stuff, but that wasn't important. It was more like spending some time together and seeing where she was. Um, and of course, Wednesday also, I had uh, probably for now, at least until January, my last medical appointment. And it sounded really, really positive. Um, so that's good. Um, I do have my regular checks. That's not going to change. Um, but so far, it's it's looking towards the bright side. So that's positive. And I just wanted to share with you guys because some of you have been noticing the fact that I have had more medical appointments um, this summer than I normally do. So I just want to give you a heads up that it's looking really, really good. So um, thank you to my specialist and everybody that's a part of that team. But it's been a lot of mumbling and babbling around because a lot of things happened. I am very genuinely sorry for not talking about Jans. Um, so the first project, I finished one this week. I did manage with all everything going on. I'm happy with whatever I reached to do this week. And I did reach the finished project, which is this beanie. And it ended up with a quite funny coloring way. Like up here, it was like a bit different. And then it became like the same. And then it started to shift to like a more swirly thing. And I'm not really sure why um, that happened because the yarn seems like it's quite the same length in it. Like, so the like, distance you have for each color until it changes again seems pretty, pretty much the same. Um, it took me, I have about a third left of the skein. So two thirds here and one third here. Um, it's been, I, I made this one quite simple. It's just a magic ring. Um, 12 double crochets in it. Then I did 24 double crochets, so two double crochets in each stitch. So the following round I did two double crochets, one double crochet, two double crochet, etc. And I did increase a few rounds. So I do believe the final stitch count, just a moment. <coughs> the final stitch count is like 72 maybe. That seems familiar at least. Um, and then on the edge, I made a reverse single crochet edging, um, which you have down here. And I think it turned out pretty okay, to be honest. Um, like, here we are. Should I want a beanie for winter? What do you think? I like the variegation of it. It's a little bit airy on top, but that's okay. Um, I was debating if I wanted to increase the length so I could like you like maybe make something where it could be folded up um, or I might need to want to find a different pattern of a more ribbing friendly beanie. I've also been considering that. Um, it could also be just make the same pattern but add a rib edge instead. Um, haven't completely decided. I do have, I have one thread left here, so I will obviously um, need more. 
um, yarn, either of this or something else, but I still have this uh, Puppeteer Playful, um, which is the yarn that I used for it. And um, just a different colorway. So I could also like make a hat of this and I have a, a third left and I could combine those two, but I don't know if they would really work together though. That would be colorful. Um, so it's not something I've completely decided on um, what I'm gonna spend the last bit of this yarn on, but I do know, um, I used a five millimeter crochet hook. It's 20% um, wool and 80% acrylics. Uh, can be washed at 30 degrees, 85 Fahrenheit. These skeins are 100 grams, so that's three and a half ounces to 200 meters of yarn, which is 218 yards. Um, so it's just like, it's, it was just like a simple project that took longer to whip up than I expected, but that's simply because the yarn is a little bit thinner than some of the past beaners I've made. But it was pretty okay, actually. What I also could do is I could double up this yarn and make it a bit thicker, and then maybe I would need a bit less to make the projects that could also be an option um not really decided on how and what yet but i could maybe whip it up with a white yarn or another blue yarn um to sort of make the yarn thicker and therefore require a bit less to make a beanie i haven't really thought through yet it's not important but i'm really quite happy with with this beanie Mm. So, but um, what I did mention to you last week was that when I was going to be driving to mines, um, we usually share driving a bit, so I didn't get to crochet all the way there, but I did bring my baby blanket there because um, I want to get some work done on it and I'm getting to the stage where I feel that it's time to really get it finished. That's also why I haven't really found a new project to start, like a new small project for um, the Beanie Wise or something else. It's because I do want to spend some time, extra time, to getting this um, Eternity baby blanket wrapped up. I think that's a, a way of saying it. Um, and of course, I needed to get some tools with me on the trip, um, including a project bag. So I actually ended up finding um, the bag that I made a bit ago. I made this lovely bag. Um, which I did line um, this spring and um, I brought that with me so I could store my uh, four and a half millimeter crochet hook, my darning needles and of course a scissor um, and that fit perfectly. It was probably a bit more spacious than what I needed but I had plenty of room for my tools um, and then of course I put that all in the project bag and then um, I finished up the last round of white. Um, I was missing about a side of shell stitches and then it was time to change color to the pink. At least I decided that was time. And I'm going to make, I think, th I'm going to make at least three rows of pink. And then when I'm done with the three rows, I'm going to decide if I think a fourth row might be wanted or desirable before adding the last two or three rows of white. Um, so this is a pink I'm using and... It's also like in a lovely pull scheme, but I decided to start from the outside. I did initially start from the inside, but it was one big yarn barf and it messed around and I had to spend more energy keeping it untangled because there was kind of like two ends coming out and which end was the right one and which was the false one. And I'm not sure if I started on the false end. So I actually ended up after a bit to like cut the yarn and just say okay I'll whatever I'll squeeze back in and I'll start from the outside because from the outside I can control it um so that's what I did um so the pull skein is not a pull skein for me right now it's not working um but to show you how this is looking and I do have lots of yarns everywhere um is that we this is the start and you can see I've started adding the first round here of shells or I can also show it like that way so this is basically we are begun we haven't gotten that far we are missing this much from the first um, first side of shells but I did prepare for the shells with the v-stitches and as you can clearly see here you can easier see how the v-stitches is working 
So I'm doing a V-stitch, crochet, chain five, V-stitch, crochet five, corner V-stitch, etc. Um, the V-stitch is a double crochet, chain one, double crochet, that's a V-stitch. Um, the V-stitch in the corners here are, again, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain three for the corner, double crochet in the same stitch, all of it, uh, chain one and double crochet. So that's a cornering. Um, so that's basically how they look. I do need to weave in some ends here um, because in the end, even though I did bring down any needles with me, I decided it wasn't that easy in the car to do with a big project like this. Um, it was almost too big to actually sit decent with it in the car. Learned that lesson. Um, but I did get some made, as you can see, so I'm pretty happy with that. So I finished the whole round to prepare for the first round of shells. So I finished the previous round, basically, of white. And I started on... Um, I, I did one round to preparing for the shells, and I'm now, like, the first side on this lovely light pink shelf and I, I i like this pink because it's a light pink it's not like a bright one so it's still sort of neutral even though it is girly ish um the old pull skein i had was a mess um and because i wasn't gonna continue on it before after some time i decided to wind it into a ball so this is what i have left and this is how they would look from from the very beginning so i think i do have like three maybe two and a half three that's at least it's i know there is two skeins in here the question is if it's three and some or if it's two and three quarters or something like that um so there is quite some yarn in this um blanket and it's progressing well um i am happy i just need to start looking at some ends to weave in and that's going to be one of my projects for this week for the focus area. Um, I am definitely going to work more on this blanket because I would like to get it finished up. Um, also, as much because, you know, I need room for new projects. We, I am working on new projects. Um, this week is going to be somewhat busy as well work-wise. So I don't know how much time I will have to do a lot of new things. Um... But that's all right. Like, it's just a couple of busy weeks. Uh, but I do know not this week. But the following week, I do have more time to start getting closer to wrapping up some stuff related to uh, the tutorial that's coming up of the uh, leafy shawl. Um, and then you will see a little of crocheting before that tutorial is actually completely finished. So you will have to be patient for me. But a dream would be to have it finished before Christmas. I think before should definitely be possible, but I'm trying to be optimistic with the time I have available and the time needed to wrap things up. It could be cool releasing it around Christmas, maybe a bit more. Um, so that's for you guys that needs to get yarn for it because you would like to make it. Um, it will still take some time and if you already have the yarn, like keep it nicely in your stash. I have not forgotten about the tutorial. I am still working on it. I just need the time for it. I do have a full-time working week next to everything else I'm doing in life. So um, thank you for your patience. And I have not forgotten. That was a quick thing. Um, I also have the Oasis shawl, which I have not progressed on. And I do believe um, that once I've wrapped up a few other things here of the things I have in progress, I will have time to also look a bit deeper into that, though... Um, I think I'm first going to do that because I kind of came to standstill um, and I will look into how to better do this um, when I am at the point with the leafy shawl where I can just crank out the rounds. Um, right now I'm still missing some recording aspects of it um, and until I've done that then afterwards I can easier focus on just doing it and then I have more capacity basically to think about other projects because one thing is just to do something that's repeating three, three it's a three row repeat pattern and that's easy and when I just do that I don't just think too much but when I do projects where I need to think I need to have a specific amount of time available for it and not too many other things going on 
Um, so we still have this Oasis cardigan going around and I still haven't flocked it yet because I still want to do some counting, trying to figure out how I'm supposed to do it before flocking it or frocking it because what if I did need to frog it it would kind of be nice if it's not needed um and therefore I've not done it yet um so I still need to spend time figuring out how and what next um so it's just this it's just waiting on me um and it's probably gonna be a week or two yet to go but it's okay um, it allows me to finish up some other projects and I do also have some amigurumis I need to start on but that's also first going to be at the earliest next week again because of everything planned and I want to get the paper blanket kind of closer to completion um, but the yarn that I'm using for this Oasis is this paper merino from Drops it's an absolutely gorgeous wonderful soft paper merino to work with um, and it's a fine weight yarn and I use a three and a half millimeter crochet hook for it, but let's not talk too much about it because I don't really have anything new to say about it as such. It's just, I guess the only new is that it will be at least another week or two before you'll probably have an update on it. Um, that's wrapping up most of it. The last thing I am working on, which I am still working on, is the country girl um summer hat bucket hat um and i'm making it also in a drop yarn and i'm making it this white muscat from drops which is a hundred percent mercer-sized cotton um and this is 50 gram skein so for 50 grams you're getting 100 meters of yarn so that's basically uh, 1.75 ounces gives you 109 yards and then in a mercer-sized cotton it's um it's an eight threaded cotton which means that let's see i actually do have some here from the skein that i'm currently working on which is basically like you can like untwine it a bit and you can see there is eight stranded um cotton in here um i don't have much left um and this is how it's currently looking you can see that the brim is slowly starting to look nice I do believe I have a couple of, I know I have a couple of rounds left. I'm not sure if I reached to do much since last. Um, there you can see this is where the edges meet. I think that could maybe be done nicer. Um, this is this learning by doing kind of thing. And if I want to make it in the future, I definitely would probably make this piece different. Um, because I don't think it closes up too nice. It works, but I think it could close up nicer. Um, like, it would probably be nice if I even took that one to the side. Let me see. I feel like a monk. But that's a different story. That's kind of where we are at. And we are going to add a few more rows um, to this hat. Which is going to add a little bit more shade to it. Um, I'm not sure if I like the look right now. At least on me. Um, but yeah. So the project itself is, is, is a fun one to work with. And I do enjoy that. And... I remember saying I hope to have it finished for this week, but fact is I just didn't because of everything that happened. I do believe I bought four skeins of the yarn to make this hat and I think I will have enough in the three and then I will basically be complete. So um, I'm still hoping then to be able to finish it up and I will probably have to sort of maybe steam stretch this one or do something like that to get a nice brim on it, on it because right now it is curling up a bit and that's because right now i do each route it keeps increasing to to keep this and make this wider sun uh sun brim there it was um overall it's i think it's really nice project um but i'm not really just i'm just not really sure if i like the look at me 
because that's what's coming down to. Um, and that could be when I'm like fitting it, even though I think it should fit. I think it's a bit smaller size head that's supposed to go in it. And I probably have a little bit too tight crochet gorge, even though I thought I tested it and it looked all right, but I do have the feeling it might be a little bit, a little bit tighter fit. Um, but that's that's with everything. Sometimes you do make things that is not turning out how you thought it would. But I'm not disappointed with it. It's just the question is just if it's something that I will be truly happy about. Like I'll be happy when I completed it because. Every project I complete is an accomplishment and it doesn't matter if it's a beanie or if it's a hat or if it's a shirt or a vest or a shawl. Um, but the real question is, will I actually be using this summer hat? I don't know yet. Um, but I do know that I am using my three millimeter crochet hook to crochet it with and I do hope to have it done for uh, next week's yarn talk video. Um, we'll see. So let's talk a little bit about what's going to happen here the coming week is that on Thursday I have a new giveaway coming up and I'm sure you will enjoy that giveaway video. At least I think it is a stellar of a giveaway video. I had great feedback on the giveaway video that was running uh, last week with the opal candy cake or candy opal. Opal candy? Candy opal. Candy opal. Scandy candy opal. Um, Thursday, I have some brushed acrylics coming up, which I think is a quite awesome look. And then I have a you pick which cake you want uh, on top. So there are two cakes in the video and you can choose one of them. So it's a little bit like you choose kind of concept giveaway. Looking forward to, um, to show you that one and i think you will like it at least i hope you will like it and, and receive it well then um, on friday we have a new yarn haul video coming up and it is a yarn haul video from ice yarns so i have a new ice yarns video for you to share i hope you will look forward to see that one and then of course i'll be back monday with a new yarn talk video catching up on everything that i managed to do this week um and i know that i'm busy so how much that will be um, is going to be a time will tell on um, on Monday. Um, but right now it's quite clear that the main priorities of my projects right now will be finishing up the summer hat and working on that baby blanket. So until I see you again, have a great day and happy crafting. Take care.